Hi there, welcome back. You might have seen the preview of this raindrop effect from the last video. And today, I'm going to show you step by step how to create the effect in DaVinci Resolve. At the end, we will use the effect template in the edit page to create different water droplets. This effect doesn't require any other third-party plugins and uses only the built-in fusion tools in DaVinci Resolve. Surprisingly, it's not as complicated as we might imagine, but the results are very realistic and convincing. Here is a sample image I'm going to use for the demo. Right-click the clip and choose Open in Fusion page. To create this raindrop effect, the first thing we want to do is to make a realistic water drops map that mimics the raindrops on glass. First, let's create some long streaks as the water drips down the screen. Add a background node to the editor, bring it into the viewer. Change the color to white. With the node selected, click the ellipse button in the toolbar. This automatically connects an ellipse mask to the background. Go to the inspector, change the width to 0.01. Enter equals sign in the height field to enable the simple expression. Drag a whip from add button to width parameter, so the height is linked to width parameter. Now, adjusting the width will also change the height. For better checking the result, let's turn off the checker underlay. Select the background node. Press shift space to open the tool selection window. Find and add a duplicate node. Bring the duplicate node into the viewer. Change the copies to 20 or any other number you like. Switch to the jitter tab. Change the center X and Y, so the duplicated circles are positioned randomly across the screen. 0.5 and minus 0.5 look good to me. Change the size to 1, this will create duplicates with various sizes. We can also change both axis X and Y to produce more randomness in the positions. This looks good. While the duplicate node is still selected, press Shift space. Find and add a light rays node. Load the light rays into the viewer. Change the ray direction to at an angle. Set the angle to 180. Change the ray drop off to CCD Bloom Harsh. Increase the length. Change the soften to zero. Decrease the length a bit, so the end of line is fading off. We now have some white lines that look like water drippings. We will add keyframes to move them from the top to the bottom. Select the ellipse node. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning. Add a keyframe for the center parameter. Change the Y to 0.99. In order for the duplicate node to work, the source needs to be visible all the time. Move the playhead to the end of the clip. Change the Y to 0.01. A keyframe is automatically added at current position as we change the parameter value. Play the clip. We got a smooth animation of lines moving down the screen. I feel the lines are a bit too much. Select the duplicate node and change the copies to 10. We can change the center X to separate the lines further. Play the clip. Now it looks good to me. 
To make them more realistic, we will add some displacements. Select the light rays node. Press Shift Space, find and add a displace node. Drag a fast noise node from the toolbar to the editor. Connect to the displace node as the foreground input. Bring the displace node into the viewer so that we see the displaced result. Select the displace node. Set the displace type to XY. Change the X refraction to 0.05. Select Fast Noise node. Increase the contrast to about 2. Scale up to 5. This is nice, the lines are now waving down like real water dripping. But these water streaks are a bit too smooth on their edges, we will add more irregularity to make them look more realistic and natural. Make a copy of the fast noise and displace nodes. Connect to the previous displace node. Bring the new displace node into the viewer. While the displace node is selected, go to the inspector. Change the X refraction to 0.005. Select the Fast Noise node. Change the scale to 20. I think they are pretty good now. You can continue to play around with the setting in the Fast Noise and Displace nodes to get the best result you like. Next, we will create other types of the water drops. Add another fast nose node to the editor and merge with the displace node. Bring the merge node to the viewer. Select the fast noise node and go to the color tab in the inspector. Change the type to gradient. Change the first color to transparent by setting the alpha to zero. Move it to the right, so that it's close to the white color. At around 0.96. Go back to the Noise tab. Increase the contrast to 2. Increase the scale to 30. Set the seeth rate to 0.02, which automatically creates an animation effect when we play the clip. Now we have these small white spots to mimic small water drops. Copy the Fast Noise node and paste it to the editor. Merge it with the previous Merge node. Bring the new Merge node to the viewer. Select the new Fast Noise node. Change the scale to 10. These will be used for the large water drops. OK, we have completed the most important part of this effect, a displacement map for the rain drops. Add a background node to the editor, bring into the viewer. Change the color to white. Connect the merge output as mask input. Go to the setting tab and change the mask channel to luminance. This will be our final raindrop map. Let's rename this background node to raindrop map. Press shift space, find and add a create bump map node. Select media in node. Press shift space again, add a displace node after the media in node. Connect the bump map node to the displace node as foreground. Drag the media out into the viewer so we can check the final result. Select the displace node. Change the type to XY. 
Set the X offset to minus 0.5. X refraction to minus 2. Change the Y offset to minus 0.5. Enter equals sign in the Y refraction field. Link it to the X refraction parameter. OK, this looks cool, but it's not the final result yet. They don't look real, there is no lighting, and we don't see much of the refractions as in the real world. Insert a brightness contrast node after the displace node. Branch out the raindrop map and connect to the brightness node as the mask input. Make sure the brightness node is selected. Go to the settings tab in the inspector, check the multiply by mask option and change the mask channel to luminance. OK, now we have the raindrop separated from the main image. Insert another brightness node after the raindrops node. We will use it to control how much we want to cut out for the raindrops. When we increase the gain, we will get more cut out as a result. We'll set it to 5 for this demo. Rename the brightness contrast node to raindrops. Add a blur node to the editor and connect to the media in output. Merge raindrops to the blur node. Disconnect the media out from raindrops and reconnect to the merge node. Now we have a blur background and raindrops in focus. Select the blur node. We can increase the blur size and have a more isolated raindrop view. This will be easier for us to do the final improvements. Select the Displace node. Change the light channel to Luma. Increase the light power to about 20. Turn up the spread to about 0.75. Higher spread values get a wider displacement effect and smooth off edge from refraction map. It's much better now, we can see the refractions through the water drops. But still not much of the lighting effect. Select the Create Bump Map node. Adjust height scale. Something around 5 looks good to me. The other thing is that the refractions inside the drops are too grainy and too sharp. So we insert a blur node before the displace node. Increasing the blur size to something around 5 seems good. Some of the larger water drops may look flat on the top. If we want to change that, we can insert a blur node before the create bump map node. and change the blur size to adjust the overall roundness of the drops. I think the default blur size 1 is good. And I'm happy with the final result of this raindrop effect. One more thing I want to demo is that this effect can refract the colors of the background image. For example, we add a text node Merge with the media input. Enter some text. If we change the text color, the refraction color also changes. When we move the text, the light positions also change, which is very cool. OK, we have covered all the steps to create this realistic raindrop effect in the Fusion page, and the key is to create a realistic raindrop map. The actual effect is achieved mainly by the create bump map and displace nodes. If you like, you can also use the fusion particle tools to create the displacement map for the water drops. To make it easier for reuse in the future, I created a macro template 
and you can download with the link in the description below. Once you have the effect template created or installed, you can use it directly in the edit page. Here in the edit page, I have a flower image on the timeline. Apply the raindrop effect. Right away, we have these clear cool looking raindrops showing on top of the flower, as we are looking through a glass window. But when I play the timeline, it's very laggy. Somehow it doesn't cache the effect automatically, even though I set the render cache mode to smart, and the render cache bar is showing blue. The playback is still not running at the full speed. In order for this effect to play back smoothly, we need to enable the render cache for fusion effect filter manually. Once the rendering cache is done, play the clip. Now it plays back at full speed. The settings in the inspector are used for basic effect adjustments. The first section is used to change drop patterns. We can change the number of drips. Set the value to zero to remove them entirely. Randomize the positions of water streaks. Change the dripping speed. Dripping path and edge can change the shape and dripping path of the water streaks. Changing small drops will shift the drop map and randomize positions of the small drops. Similarly, large drop is used to change the pattern of the large water drops. The appearance group is used to change the look and feel of the effect. If you want to reduce the refraction, you can move the slider to the middle. Or adjust the displacement spreads. And change the power of lighting. We can use these blur options to create some effects like water drops on frosted glass or condensed glass. If we keyframe these blur settings, we can make an animation effect of focus shifting. For example, change the focus from the raindrops to the flowers. To change more advanced settings, we can open the effect in the Fusion page. Double-click the group node, or right-click and choose Expand Group. Let's remove the keyframes for now, to focus on the raindrops. Set the number drips to zero, I want to keep only the water drops. Select the Noise Drop Small node, which controls the small drops pattern. Reduce the detail to about 1. Smaller value produces a smoother water drop edge. Scale down to about 10. Increase the brightness a bit to make the drops larger. Select Noise Drop Large node, it controls the pattern of the large drops. Similarly decrease the detail value to about 1. Scale down to 5. Increase the brightness or contrast to make the drops bigger. Once the cache is done, play the clip. It looks pretty cool. If we want the drops moving faster, we can increase the seethe rate. This effect is very demanding and resource intensive. You will need to cache the effect in order to run smoothly. In the Fusion page, we can choose Cache to Disk on the Media Out node. Or set the Fusion Cache mode to On, or Auto mode in the Playback menu. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.